Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank all of you for not just for being here today, but for your public service. Um, I tremendously appreciate it. Dr. Berhe, um, I saw that you went and, and you got a, a PhD in biogeochemistry. I want to just publicly salute you for that. <laughs> because I, it, That's got to be one of the great interconnections of science, which I think if you look at where cutting edge research is today, so much of it is taking place at, the, at, that, at a nexus like that. And I, was, I have a master's in geology, but it would be considered primitive from anything that you've uh, studied. And I know that Berkeley is one of the top schools in the country. So again, to have dealt with what you did, what your family did to come here and to achieve that is really remarkable. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, looking at uh, or beyond uh, direct, just direct error capture, uh, nature affords us a, multiple, a multitude of ways of capturing carbon and storing carbon. Um, and how do you think about funding that research and supporting entrepreneurs whose uh, natural carbon removal technologies uh, perhaps don't get to the market for five or 10 years uh, as opposed to being there already? And uh, I also love just to, if you could per, uh, persuade, provide a uh, example from the, uh, some examples from the soil carbon and you know, mineral sequestration. I don't even know what blue carbon is, but one of my staff dug that up. Anyway, uh, give us a, a quick answer on that. Thank you, Senator, and I appreciate your comments. And um, you know, biogeochemistry is, as you said, a very interdisciplinary area. But as again, you correctly said, um, we have to think in those interdisciplinary perspectives if we are going to um, kind of keep pushing the frontiers of the science. Um, and, and I'm a huge fan of geology, obviously, so thank you. Um, yeah, so I, uh, just to address your question, um, Nature, indeed, is one of our best allies in addressing the climate challenge. There are multiple solutions available. This is the area of research where I've spent a considerable amount of a part of my uh, career. Um, there are multiple areas that where um, we are able to actually take out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, for example, and store it in more um, slower cycling pools in soil. And doing so um, in soil and other natural environments, um, in blue carbon even um, becomes an important issue as in carbon in, in oceans and in ocean set, uh, you know, in the ocean system and marine systems and aquatic systems in general. Um, all of those are options that are incredible, available, and you know, keep in mind that the way we have used natural resources historically has caused a lot of carbon to be released from the natural ecosystems into the atmosphere. But we can at least reverse some of that um, and actually use natural ecosystems to sequester a significant amount of carbon um, from the and take it out. So draw down from the atmosphere and reduce the atmospheric burden of greenhouse gases. Um, this is a thriving area of research and also a thriving area that is of interest to businesses and land managers across the board. Um, and I think um, you know, I, I agree with you that sometimes uh, research could be a little slow, uh, but this is in one area where the technology transfer and the partnerships between science and industry has is moving at a really fast pace. And I think everything we could do to help in that respect um, from the scientific standpoint um, could only help address this incredible climate challenge that we have in front of us. It is it's an exciting time. You're, I think you're going to be the right person in the right place. Um, and I'm going to... Um, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get to you, Dr. Richman, but I trust me, I am so impressed with all that you've done. Uh, and I saw that you taught for five years at, at Bryn Mawr, where my, my great aunt went. And so I have a, a huge fan of that institution. Um, uh, Ms. Sackelberg, I want to just put in a, a, a plug and ask your opinion. So often when science is occurring and research is occurring, some of the most important work is done by the people that aren't scientists and those who are able to keep an enterprise on budget and on task. And obviously, you've done that in a number of different arenas. Um, is that somehow, describe just briefly, and I've used up too much of my time, that that ability, um, how do you see that helping in the, uh, in the Department of Interior and the role you're proposed for? 
Senator, thank you for that question, and I will be brief. Um, that is what is exciting about the Assistant Secretary for Policy Management and Budget. I have spent my career um, working to ensure that teams have the uh, support they need, the budgets they need, the direction that they need, providing strategic guidance and leadership to teams and bureaus and divisions, and that's what I've done throughout my career. Um, if I'm confirmed, I look forward to doing it, not just with scientists, not just with climate experts, not just with firefighters, not just with those who work on um, uh, water and mines um, and Native Americans, uh, but with all of the department assets to ensure that we uh, conserve our public lands, that we ensure that we have an outdoor economy that is creating jobs um, and working for all of us. It's the, it's the kind of work that I like to do, bringing disparate people together, working across the aisle, and if I'm confirmed, I look forward to working with you and others on this committee to ensure that the department is moving in the right direction. Great, and I've, had, I've seen firsthand experience of the, the sensitivity of, of uh, scientists, that probably only matched by the sensitivity of senators. Um, anyway, I yield my, uh, my time to the, or my lack of time to the chair. <laughs> we're, we're not, not that sensitive.